It was a cold day in early March. Everyone in the village was going about their daily work, and everything was just as usual, except for one thing. A strange little girl holding a bouquet of primroses standing at the door of a farmhouse. She could not remember who she was or how she got there, but something within her told her to knock. Yes, what do you want? Who are you? I... I don't quite remember, ma'am. What? What do you mean you don't remember? Look, I have lots of work to do, so don't waste my time. Uh, um, can I come in? It's rather cold outside. Of course not! What is the matter? Just look at this girl. She does not even know who she is is or where she came from or even her name or all she wants is to come in well look at the silk she is wearing and the flowers she carries she must be the daughter of a rich man and she must have got lost i expect that whoever takes care of her will receive a big reward from her parents if you don't want her, I'll keep her. Oh, no, you won't. She will stay here with us. And the little girl started staying with the farmer's family. Since she had a bunch of flowers with her, when she had come, they started calling her Primrose. When after a few weeks, no rich man came looking for his daughter. Wake up, Primrose. Go. Take the cows out grazing and before that, fill the water from the well, water the garden and mop the shed. Get up now. Little Primrose was made to do all the work of the house from morning to night. But she did not complain and went about her work cheerfully. She loved to graze the cows as that gave her some peace and quiet. But she was lonely and longed for a friend. One day, I think your brother's in the village. I don't have a brother. Oh, yes, he must be like you. He does not know where he came from. We saw him hobbling on crutches. He seems to be sick. Sick a and hobbling on crutches? Poor boy. Where did you see him? I is he staying with someone in the village? He is alone and he is living in that old shed by the path to the forest. That's all I know, and that's all I care. So stop irritating me with your questions. Primrose's tender heart longed to help this sick boy. So as soon as she could, she went to see him. Hello. They call me Primrose. <laughs> and they call me the sick boy. I have got some hay to make a bed for you, a and a blanket. You are so kind. I just know how it feels to be lonely and unloved. <laughs> well, that makes us two of a kind, doesn't it? Like a brother and sister? I don't remember ever having any family. Neither do I. Can we be brother and sister? Yes, indeed. Primrose would meet the boy every day and bring him the food she would save up from her own share. One day, when he looked even paler than usual, I wish I could bring you some medicine to make you well again. No, medicine will not cure me. If medicine won't cure you, then what will? You might find it really strange, but I get this feeling that the only thing that can cure me is a cake. A cake? I know it seems really silly, but something inside me tells me that I really need a cake to become better. I just know it! Primrose was determined to get cake for her brother. So, on the next baking day... Ma'am, can I please have one small cake for the sick boy? Huh! First, I have to keep you and now look after some strange sick boy. Not one crumb will you get from here, huh? Cake for the sick boy. Primrose was really sad, 
but she did have some money which some neighbors had given her for odd jobs she sometimes did for them. That night, she counted it. It was a whole sixpence. Surely that might be enough to buy a small cake to cure her sick brother. She made up her mind to buy a cake the next day. But before she could... Primrose? Primrose! Yes, ma'am? You have six pence, don't you? What do you need them for? I need five pence for this saucepan. Give me the money. Oh, uh, please let me keep the money. I have saved it to get a cake for the sick boy. It is always about the sick boy. Don't forget that we are the ones who keep you. Now just hand me the money. Primrose now only had one penny left. She couldn't buy a cake with that. But a bun? Surely a bun is as good as a cake. She was about to put the penny in her pocket when her foster brother suddenly snatched it from her. I want this to buy some candy. Oh, please, I have saved up a penny to buy a bun for the sick boy. Forget about that sick boy. You live in our home. That day, when she went to the forest to graze the cows, she cried and cried. Suddenly, she heard the sweetest voice ever. No cake, no bun to take for her sick brother to become well again. Uh, who is speaking? Down here, Primrose! And Primrose saw the tiniest little creature, an actual fairy with wings, standing on top of a primrose flower. She was aghast. So, you need a cake, is it? Uh, yes, to make my sick brother well. Hmm, I have an option for you. Look, your foster family treats you no better than a servant, so... Come with me. I shall take you to a place where you shall have a castle and servants to serve you, and dresses of silk, and cakes and puddings and pies every day. You will be treated like a princess, and have nothing to feel sad about ever again, but... It is either that, or the cake. Take the cake. Make the sick boy better, and then continue staying like a servant for the family. What is it going to be? Make a wise choice. Thank you for all those wonderful things that you spoke of. Mm, but I should not be able to enjoy any of them knowing that my brother is sick and suffering when I could have made him well. I choose the cake, please. Immediately there was a flash of light as though someone had switched on hundreds of lights in the sky. And Primrose saw so many little fairies hovering all around her, flying busily about. Some carried pots of pollen and poured it into a huge bowl of light, while some others stirred a huge ladle made of light in the bowl. Then the bowl turned to a round oven of red light and the sweetest, most beautiful aroma of sweet baking filled the air. Then, in a flash, fairies carried to Primrose a cake that looked like a pearl. Take this to your brother. <sighs> Thank you so much. In a flash, all the fairies disappeared and Primrose ran to her brother. I brought your cure. I brought your cure. Have this and become well again. The boy began eating the cake as Primrose told him all that had happened. And then the boy's body was filled with bright light. And when the light disappeared, instead of the boy, she saw standing before her a prince and not really a human one. Oh, Primrose! Now I remember! I remember it all! What are you talking about? Don't you remember me? I am the Prince of the Creatures of Light! And you... YOU! The Fairy Princess! Oh yes! And it was time for us to... It was time for us to undergo the test! Come here, Primrose! Prince Light! 
For centuries, the creatures of light and fairies have lived in harmony, serving this world together. Our friendship is very important to maintain order in nature. Well, my son, you will one day rule my kingdom of light, but only the one who can bear darkness with forbearance can understand the true importance of light. And only one who can smile in the time of adversity, who can choose to be kind to others when no one is kind to her, deserves to rule the kingdom of the fairies. So we send you both to Earth as ordinary mortals to test the strength of your heart. That's why we remembered nothing. Yes, and now we do. Do you think we passed? Oh, yes, you did. You passed with flying colors. You were sick and abandoned, but you never complained. And you chose the happiness of another over your own, even though others were mean to you. Both of you have made us proud. Now it is time for you to return home. So all the fairy folk got into a grand chariot of light and flew over the village. As they flew over the farm, Primrose flew down and kept a bouquet of golden primroses at their doorstep and left the world of humans forever. Well, you and I may not be fairies, but when we are kind, even in the face of meanness, and when we bear our troubles without complaining, magic happens, and we soon find our lives full of love and happiness.